just wanted to go through a few of the truths and the lies of the Rothschild family, their wealth, how they got here, what they've done in history, some of the things that they're doing now, and how they've been the result of many conspiracy theories, including Freemasonry, the Illuminati, um, Jewish uh, conspiracy theories, and anti-Semitism. Um, just wanted to maybe brush up on a few of the things that they've been accused of financing wars, uh, killing presidents, the Holocaust, but in reality I think they're just an aristocratic family that are enjoying wealth and making lots of money uh, in the background, but I wouldn't say that they entirely control the world and all of the banks as a lot of claims have been making also go through their history how they came from germany the houses they built across europe and now most of them are not there anymore they've sold them there's as many reasons why they don't have them anymore just in the words of jacob rothschild it was an extraordinary phenomenon because the rothschild family having made a lot of money in the 19th century and having come from the ghetto in frankfurt with nothing decided to build on a huge scale throughout Europe. Most of those houses have now gone. Uh, Wadsden remains as the one with its collections intact, in fact, growing. It was Mayor Amschel Rothschild in the 1700s in Germany who set up his own bank. And he had five sons who he sent out across Europe to Germany, France, Austria, the UK and Italy and these five sons Amschel, Solomon, Nathan, Carl and James all set up their own banks under the name of NM Rothschilds which is now it's called today and these five banks still exist you have members of the family are still quite philanthropic and work within the banking systems and it's still quite a big family now going into the first one my family is worth 500 trillion it's n good to note that there's only 9.2 trillion of the entire gold that has been dug up uh, the world's assets is 200 trillion and the derivatives market is 500 trillion so to say that they have this amount of money is completely false the second one is we own nearly every central bank in the world they own no central banks but their own five they set up and help to set up the bank for international settlements but all these banks are publicly owned by their respective governments as for the bank of international settlements it was set up just after the first world war to get reparations of Germany. This was set up by France, the UK, Austria, you know, the usual. The idea was thought of by Owen D. Young, who was the head of RCA at the time. RCA is now owned by Serco, which are subsidiaries of the Crown Corporation through its tax havens. But as for the Bank of International Settlements, this is what they call the central bank, central bank around the world. All but about three or four different countries, North Korea being one of them, are all part of the Bank of International Settlements and are regulated by this bank. It's also been said that they have financed both sides of every war since the Napoleonic Wars. I'm sure they invest in war and arms and certain investments, but to finance a whole thing is something different. There's also the saying that we own the media, the news, the oil and your government. As for controlling the media, they own a massive conglomerate in the name of Reuters which owns AP which gives out a lot of information. It's basically the BBC of the United States where most of the information comes from there. So they do own a big part of the media. Um, there was also propaganda that Nathan de Rothschild stole the entire economy off the UK government and this is completely false. Uh, I've just put up a Wikipedia link as to people who did try and con the British government by saying Napoleon had won the war. It had nothing to do with 
Nathan de Rothschild, what people are led away from is the fact that the Rothschilds set up and funded Israel. The Balfour Declaration, the expression of the British government's support for a Jewish home in Palestine, was sent by British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour to the second Lord Rothschild. Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you, on behalf of His Majesty's Government, the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has been submitted to and approved by the Cabinet. So it's possibly the most famous letter in modern Jewish history, and it begins with three words. Dear Lord Rothschild, why was it that this letter was sent by the Foreign Secretary to your great uncle Walter? It's an interesting question because he was really interested in ornithology, <laughs> although he became interested in Zionism. I think the uh, reason was this, that it was primarily a movement from Eastern Europe, but they didn't clarify who was in charge of that movement. And in addition, it was after all in Great Britain. So they felt that the Rothschild family um, should be the one to whom it was addressed. And Walter was Lord Rothschild and he was uh, a Zionist. And um, those really are the background reasons. What does one hope for? One of course hopes for a peaceful relationship uh, with Israel's neighbours, and that's going to be the most difficult matter of all to achieve. But even now you can see, with the disarray in the Middle East and the importance of relationships that Israel is developing, not only with Jordan, but also with Egypt and indeed with Saudi Arabia, even if they're not publicised because of the Sunni Shiite war, there's hope. And I think if you take the need of Arab nations uh, to have intelligence help. And if, on the other hand, you take compassion and generosity coming from Israel to Palestinian territories and its less fortunate neighbours, there are grounds for optimism. And I am an optimist. It's another case of make of it as you will, but I firmly believe the Rothschilds, even with their billions, are just one major aristocratic banking family of the many in the UK and the world, and are not one ruling family as made out. It's important to note the owners of these five corporations, Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft and Facebook, have generated more personal wealth than the Rothschilds have done in their entire history. They are just knights of the realm, but do not under control of the monarchy. They are Zionists in a way they have funded and facilitated the creation of the Jewish state Israel by part land grab settlements, part buying and part stealing through means of colonization, exploitation, war and violence throughout the Middle East to cause tensions whilst taking away the land from the Palestinians by funding, lobbying and orchestrating the Israel government to carry out the tyranny over many years and on many people. They also have control and lobbied many seats of power within British, USA and Saudi Arabian governments too whilst taking billions from US taxpayers. They have investment companies used to set the price of gold twice a day, generate wealth by helping wealthy people generate more wealth they still have vast estates they fund many forms of charities museums architecture vast estates for public use art galleries growing gardens wine vineyards zoos they own private jets boats horses cars and a number of philanthropic ventures that have helped to keep the house of Rothschilds a household name for over two centuries so yes they are indeed a very powerful family and one that needs attention, bringing their way in so many ways, good and bad, but also many conspiracy theories that lead people down the wrong path and information and rabbit holes concerning the Rothschilds needs calling out and correcting so we can move forward in a more equal world where the aristocracy and all those who made their wealth in the past by deceiving the people needs to never happen again in the future in towards society.